Okay, let's go ahead and figure out this math problem. And I'm going to tell you what type of math problem this is here in a second. But uh, first, I'm going to read you the problem, and then we're going to discuss exactly how to solve it. But the problem is 5 is to 40 as x is to 16. So we're looking for the correct value of x that makes this statement true. So if you think you can figure this out, that's excellent. Put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the actual solution to this here in just a moment. And then I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna walk through step-by-step step how to solve this. But uh, this topic that we're talking about is tremendously important in mathematics. You absolutely need to know it. Matter of fact, if you know what the topic is, put that into the comment section as well. Like what type of mathematical kind of principles and concepts are you working with to solve this problem? Well, I'm gonna to get to all of this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. And I can tell you right now that you can be successful in mathematics now, a lot of you, uh, especially those of you that struggle in math, you might be saying to yourself, well, not me. You're probably talking to someone else. No, I mean you too, right? Who cares if you failed a few uh, courses? That doesn't define you as a person or your potential, okay? What you need is encouragement, the desire to learn, uh, to learn math, and uh, the most important thing you need is great math instruction. You know, math instruction that you actually understand, clear, comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you homeschool mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it. In the description of this video, we literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span all these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my uh, math notes. Now, I have pretty comprehensive math notes because that's how you should be taking notes. But if you are not taking notes, or if you have like sloppy or incomplete notes, you need to work on your note taking as this is a critical skill in mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here that I'm gonna be talking about what type of uh, concepts or what is the big picture topic here that we're gonna be discussing. Well, let me go ahead and uh, give you the answer. The answer is X is equal to two. So five is to 40 as X, well, this is gonna be two, is to 16. Okay, so how did you do? Did you get this answer? And by the way, uh, if you were kind of like just playing around with the numbers, if you didn't really know exactly what you were doing, but you kind of reasoned through and you got this answer, well, listen, all of you got this correct answer, deserve a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can celebrate today's math success. Now, by the way, if you're here and you didn't get this um, answer correct, but you're motivated to learn this, I too am going to give you a nice happy face for just being motivated to learn math, okay? So there's no sad faces here. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this topic though, right? So what's going on and how do we solve this? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. All right, so five is to 40 as X is to 16. What this is, is um, uh, a problem, a math problem that falls under the topic of ratios and proportions. And typically when you're studying mathematics, especially at the middle school level, pre-algebra, algebra one level and beyond, you'll have some sort of unit um, or chapter that will say something like proportions or ratios. If you look in your math textbooks or what you're studying, uh, for those of you uh, that are math students at the middle or high school level or even college level, it doesn't make a difference. You should know ratios and proportions. And really there's even another word in here called rates, rates, ratios and proportions. So let's just quickly define uh, rates and ratios real quick. And, and what we're dealing with here happens to be a ratio. I'll get to a proportion here in a second. But effectively, rates and ratios are essentially fractions, okay? Uh, so a ratio is a fraction that compares, uh, well, we're really talking about units of measure where the units of measure are the same, okay? So I don't want to really too, um, uh, focus too heavily on the difference between uh, rates and ratios and proportions because that's a, a pretty big topic that we really kind of need to look at in further detail. If you need to um, learn more about rates, ratios, and proportions, I have a ton more videos on YouTube 
that goes into it further, but you can probably learn all of this uh, with my full instruction. Well, probably, you definitely will with like my Algebra 1 course. But just as a real quick um, kind of definition, a ratio and a rate are fractions. And uh, what we're looking at is the units of measure. So when the units of measure are the same, okay, uh, effectively we're comparing two different numbers uh, that are the same units of measure. That is a ratio. So something like uh, uh, five uh, students to, well, let me do it this way, one teacher to 20 students. That would be an example of a ratio. Now you're saying, well, you're talking about a teacher and you're talking about student. You're counting two different type of things. No, we're counting people. And even though you might not think a teacher is a person, they are a human being. So one human being to 20 human beings, we're basically comparing the same units of measure. Whereas a rate, okay, would be something like, uh, let's say, do this, 60 miles per one hour, okay, 60 miles per one hour. So this uh, right here is distance, okay, this number here is counting distance, and this number down here, or this unit down here is counting time. So when you're counting or when you're... Um, a fraction is comparing two different numbers with completely different units of measure. That is a rate. Now, the one thing that you want to be familiar with is that a rate uses the word per, okay, like 60 miles per hour. And ratios, you, uh, you'll hear uh, the word two. Okay, so here you can see we have five is 240 as x is 216. Uh, so this where two is indicating a ratio. All right, so I kind of wanted to kind of cover all this because I don't want anyone to just be, you know, like confused about this. We're like, oh, I thought, you know, this might have to do something with rates because uh, some of you, um, well, not just some of you, most all of you out there, if you've, um, you know, taken middle school, high school of mathematics, you have done ratios and proportions. And I want to get to what a proportion is uh, here in a second. So what we have to do is go ahead and write this, these parts of the problems as fractions, okay, because they are ratios. And let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that right now. Okay, so 5 is to 40. This is a ratio. And effectively, what we can do is write this right here, 5 is to 40, this way, 5. And then 2 is the fraction bar right there, okay? 5 is to 40, we can put right down there. So 5 is to 40, we can write as a fraction. 5 is to 40 or 5 over 40, okay? So how do you think we would write x is to 16? Again, this is a ratio. We have that word 2. It's pretty easy. We're going to write that as x is to 16. Okay, so x is to 16. You can write it this way, x over 16, but you can also write it this way. It's a ratio and 5 over 40. You can write as 5 is to 40. Okay, so now we're going to have to go ahead and take this to the next level. So we have 5 is to 40 as. We've got to talk about this word as right here. And this is going to be the equal sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this together now. So we have 5 is to 40, which is this right here. Um, and then x is to 16 is this right here. And as is the equal sign. So we have 5 is to 40 as x is to 16. So this is what we have right here. And what we're uh, saying is we have one ratio, which of course is a fraction, equaling to another fraction, okay, or ratio. So two equal ratios or two equal rates or two equal fractions are all basically the same thing. By definition is what we call a proportion. So we're dealing with a proportion. So if you said in the comment section, you're like, well, I think we're dealing with a, a proportion here or we're dealing with ratios, all those answers would be outstanding. And even if you put the uh, rate down, although that's not technically correct, I would still give you some credit, uh, you know, as you were kind of close in terms of, you know, identifying the topic here. Okay, so now what we have to do is solve this proportion. And let's go ahead and take a look how to do that right now. Okay, so... When you have two equal fractions, of course, by definition, that is a proportion. Let's go ahead and look at uh, something really easy here before we get into the solution. You can see I already have it written down here. Here is a fraction one half. I am going to uh, come up with another fraction that's equal to this fraction. Uh, how about like three over six? 
So we could pretty much all agree that one half is equal to three six. I could just reduce uh, three over six. I would get back to one half. Now uh, these two values or these two uh, fractions are equivalent. Okay, they represent the same value 0.5 in terms of a decimal, but these are two equal fractions, i.e. a proportion. So when you have two equal fractions, what you um, can do is use the cross product to verify that or use the cross product to solve a proportion. And the cross product is the following, okay? When you have a proportion, i.e. two equal fractions, you can cross multiply this way. So here, two times three is what? Let's go and write it like this. Uh, two times three, of course, is six. And then right here, if we multiply this way, we have 1 times 6. And, of course, that's 6. So 6 is equal to 6. So when you have a proportion, the cross product is always true, i.e., the cross product uh, yields the same number. So we can use that concept, or, and this is really, really important. When you're dealing with proportions, you want to be thinking of that cross product. Now, there are a couple different um, other ways you can think about uh, solving proportion problems, but the cross product by far is the most common. And it kind of, there's another kind of term that goes with it, the means equal the extremes. You don't need to worry about that. Just as long as you get this basic idea of the cross product down, you'll be good to go when it comes to proportion. So let's go ahead and use that to solve for this variable x. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. We're going to use a cross product. So let's go ahead and go this way. So 40 times x is 40x, and then 5 times 16 will be 5 times 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step here. So we have 40x is equal to 5 times 16, which of course is 80. So how do I solve for x when I have 40x is equal to 80? Easy, I just design, uh, divide both sides of the equation by 40, and you're going to get x is equal to 2, right? 80 divided by 40 is 2, and that is the answer. But let's go ahead and verify that real quick just to make sure that we did this correct. So here was our original problem. 5 is to 40 as x is to 16. So we're saying this x is 2. Well, let's go ahead and plug in a 2 right here, and you can see I've uh, already done that right uh, on this side. So we have 5 is to 40 as 2 is uh, to 16. Is this true? Well, you can see the cross product would, in fact, be true, right? Uh, 40, uh, 40 times 2 would be 80, and 5 times 16 would be 80. But, you know, another way we can kind of look at that is we have two fractions that we can reduce down. So 2 sixteenths, I can reduce down to the fraction 1 eighth, and 5 over 40, I can also reduce down to the fraction 1 eighth, right? Because 5 goes into 40. Or, uh, eight times. So you can reduce these fractions down. You can clearly see that we are dealing with two equal fractions. So x uh, is equal to two is in fact the correct solution, uh, solution to this proportion problem. Okay, so again, ratio, rates, proportions, they are everywhere in mathematics and in science as well. So you really got to know this stuff and they show up all the time on standardized tests. So if you need additional help with rates, ratios, and proportions, and uh, the problems, by the way, for rates, ratios, and proportions can become much more complex than this. Okay, so I don't want to discourage you, but you definitely need to know this and practice more challenging problems. So, again, if you're really uh, looking to um, learn this, I would suggest my Algebra 1 course in my Math Help program. I got additional videos. And by the way, too, if you happen to be studying geometry, uh, uh, ratios um, and proportions are a big part of geometry as well. And I also teach this within my geometry course, kind of at a different level. So those are some uh, suggestions if you want to continue to learn more about this topic. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.